get me down again. yo what up youtube it's your boy stan back with another video part two of the last video i just uploaded uh as you can see behind me right there we got the lt1 uh ready to finish the disassembly on it so uh we're gonna do that i'm gonna go over a few things also i got some parts let's see if i can show it to you i got some parts over there in the corner uh, also right here that i didn't mention to you guys in the last video I guess it's kind of a blessing I wasn't able to finish what I need to the first time I forgot to mention all that so we'll check that out first and then we're gonna finish ripping this motor apart and we'll go from there but let's get into it all right ladies and gentlemen like I mentioned we're gonna finish the teardown oh look at that CTSV Whew. all right we're gonna finish the teardown on the LT1 I want to show you guys the parts and let's go over a few things all right so like I mentioned just earlier, uh, we have a few parts. We're gonna review what we got. So in that box from Texas Speed, uh, we got piston rods, main studs, and head studs. All the good stuff to get the short block right. Only thing we're missing from Texas Speed right now is the bottom end. We gotta get the bearings, and I need the uh, trunnion upgrade. So that's the two things we're waiting on Texas Speed to get, and then the engine will have everything. I got a few more parts I'm gonna show you. Um, some upgraded coolers, we're not upgraded coolers, they're actually just the stock Z01 coolers off of Z01 1LE. Uh, I wish they were, even though this says Vengeance on here, this is a Weapon X box. I wish they were the, Ve the Weapon X uh, upgraded coolers, that would be great. Uh, ADM Performance, which is the same thing as LSA Conversion, which is the same th place where you get your LT4, LT4 conversion kit from. Um, so that's what that box is there. We got B, BMR lower trailing arms, uh, BMR upper trailing arms, and another set of BMR upper trailing arms. Actually, upper control arms. I was like, what? Upper control arms, lower trailing arms, upper trailing arms. And then we got the GM high pressure fuel pump up there. Uh, I will pull it out. There's really no reason to. It's just a fuel pump. Then we kind of come over here to my other grand old. We got the BMR chassis braces. I pulled these out of the box. I know you guys don't want to just look at it. Uh, start the Camaro up a few minutes ago. Missed that cold start. Missing opportunities to get, get great footage, but it's all good. I'm more concerned about pulling this engine apart. So, like I said, I'll pull them out because they're just chassis braces. Just give me one second. Let me let me get, get these out. All right, so boom, like I said, these are the BMR 6th Gen Camaro chassis cradle uh, arms. Let's see what they call them, actually, so I give you the right word. Okay, BMR cradle brace front of rear cradle. Uh, so basically, you see, I got these. I got the upper and lower control arms and the trailing arms here. Basically, I'm not going full BMR. I do have, let's check it out. I do have, come on, the iBox shocks and everything, or not shocks, Jesus, I'm messed up, iBox springs on the car, um, I can't really get you a side view of, actually, yeah, I can't, get you a side view of the car, sitting low and chunky right now, as you can see right there, uh, iBox springs, I'm not going to switch to BMR springs, uh, I'm not really too excited about switching to BMR uh, what am I trying to say BMR uh, sway bars I'm not really too enthused about switching to that either the one I leave is pretty solid I'm just trying to improve on the car while I'm doing all this uh, ended up getting these thanks to Attitude Street Cars uh, anyways I was going to show you guys but thanks to Attitude Street Cars for uh, getting me a lot of most of this stuff actually uh, 
the performance shop I used to work at. So let me put these back and then we'll go. The box below it has the goodies in it. So one second. So I finally got to the box. I, like I said earlier, I don't, uh, I'm not sponsored by Texas Speed, but I work with Texas Speed uh, quite a lot. I used to do a lot of business with them when I worked at Attitude Streetcars. And uh, since I have a really, really good rela relationship with Attitude Streetcars, I still have the ability to talk to Texas Speed, to do some different things and get some things. Uh, it's not anything special, uh, but it makes me feel special. They actually do take care of me, especially my guy, Gary. Uh, Texas Speed push rods, uh, really just standard stuff. The biggest thing I wanted to go over is the lifters I'm using. Uh, these are Texas Speed recommended. These are Morel push rods. I mean, not pushers, lift push rods I mean lifters um, I'm a fan of LS7 lifters for most aftermarket stuff unless you're going a super race car I usually prefer to go LS7 uh, with GM and this is actually affecting me at my job too but with GM uh, basically they were shut down they just opened up this week uh, any type of aftermarket park like uh, lifters LS7 lifters the GM high pressure fuel pump was hard to get um, I had to, another thing I'll show you guys real quick, is I had to find a source uh, for, if they'll come out, come on, y'all this is tough with one hand, I had to find a source for, goodness gracious, LT4 fuel injectors, um, so I got a hold of those as well, uh, thanks, there's a guy on Facebook that has a performance shop um, that has some type of access to them. Because uh, they're sold out everywhere. If you have looked, uh, really, for this type of upgrade, especially for fueling on direct injection cars, it's very, very tough. Um, luckily, something like CTSV already has LT4 fuel injectors, so they have a long way to go as far as power, fuel uh, supply, and everything. A car like your SS's, uh, and not even just 1LEs. Luckily, the 1LEs have the intake Z01 fuel pump in them. So they have the Z01 fuel pump. Uh, for the low side that just gets the fuel to the pump that goes on the back of the engine here uh, right there like I said over there in the corner I have the GM high pressure fuel pump for the LT4 I mean it's just called a high pressure but it is LT4 fuel pump that's gonna go on the engine but even if you have that you still got to have the injectors to supply the fuel to the pistons the injectors and the one out LT1 injectors aren't big enough, so you have to have LT4 injectors. Uh, there's also a fuel line that you have to get. You have to get pretty much in general because I want to say it's probably a crush fit type fuel line, so it only fits one time. So there's that. Got my Texas Speed valve springs. I got NC, man, Texas Speed shows love. I actually didn't want to open this until uh, the video, so let me open this really quick and then we'll go over this too. All right, guys. So like I said before I unboxed it or unwrapped it, was Texas Speed Shows Love. My man Gary was talking to him on the phone. I wanted this valley cover. So this is the Texas Speed DLD Delete valley cover for the LT4 setup. As you can see, because this points straight on the LT1s, it points uh, out to the right, I believe. Uh, but anyway, I wanted this one. At the time, he didn't think they had them in stock for the LT4 setup. I think he had it for the LT1. And I said, all right, well, finish me the unfinished version, or send me the unfinished version, uh, which is basically just the regular uh, silver uh, metal finish. Um, so that's what I expected to get. I really want the black one, the black Texas Speed logo. Not because you can see this, because I'm running the LT4 Supercharger. It's going to cover all this up. You won't be able to see it. Uh, if I had like a Holly High Ram or something, this would be, be nice. Uh, but like I didn't want to pay for the K-Tech one way too much money anything like that but then Come over here to the flip side and you get this big bulky You're still gonna keep all the DOD mechanism in place. You just put the block off valves in it to block Basically, let's see if I can show you There's um See like that little hole that's right there. You block that off with the little block off uh basically billet parts they give you so you still run the gm valley cover but you uh just block it off basically so it doesn't work i believe like all these little dots right here with the raised ones or where the oil goes through to activate the dod of course one of lee cars don't use that 
because our manual cars don't use that not even just one of these manuals don't use it because they don't, uh, manual cars obviously don't activate DOD that's why I got this uh, and like I said the black one I wasn't expecting to get shout out to Texas Speed for the love really appreciate it wasn't expecting that this is the first time I looked at it obviously you saw me unbox it so I'm pretty happy about that I just like nice finished black stuff so that's what it is let's get back into it lifter trays nothing too special they're probably just ls7 lifter trays if you can use that on lts uh k-tech uh time and chain i guess it doesn't say c5r uh, but it's supposed to be a c5r time and chain whatever k-tech uses at this point it's all pretty much the same i've got the same old sloppy time and chain on my cammed out truck so that's great valley cover gasket um uh, ls3 front seal uh front cover seal i realized i probably need a rear main seal um because greg had his way with that engine so probably gonna need a rear main seal for that engine head gaskets like i said we'll check out the valve springs really quick texas speed dual valve springs i'm sure plenty of you guys have seen that before but let's get down into the bread and butter why i want to open this box which is this nice texas speed bullet cam i got so i'm gonna put it over here taking it out once now i'm gonna give you a quick uh well, actually all right so before i go to the cam uh appreciate you for watching this far into the video keep watching we're gonna get this engine taken apart uh, make sure you like subscribe share i didn't say that before make sure you subscribe um this cam for my car i spec myself uh i'm not gonna show you the cam specs yet i will share the cam specs with you guys i'm not really trying to hide it because the cam's not gonna be that special uh i did take specs from two other cams that i really really like that i was considering buying uh, and combine them to try that, that i think make the ultimate cam for what i'm doing this isn't the best cam to make the most horsepower ever but for my car i think it'll maximize what i have going on uh shout out to my buddy lupe which is illegal racing which i always say why legal racing because that's how it's spelled uh, but i'll put it down here legal racing check out his video he has a really really great video explaining how you guys can spec cams and learn how to spec cams and read cam specs uh i had a general idea his video pushed me over the edge, edge to actually understand what was going on. So check that out. But let me go ahead and open up this cam. And there's one cool thing I want to show you. I know you guys probably want to see the cam specs. But there's one thing I want to show you guys. So like I said, uh, this is my Texas Speed cam. There's a 32% fuel lobe down there. Uh, you'll see that all when I show you the cam specs later on. The biggest thing is I wanted to show you my blackbird logo that my buddy gary got put on the cam for me i really appreciate that i know these shops put their uh, logos on and things like that and we're going to get attitude to start doing that as well but um the blackbird is my 2017 1le if you don't know 27 1le it took me three years to figure out what to name it and i finally named it the blackbird because the blackbird sr71 is the fastest thing known to man as far as man-made objects are concerned besides rockets and things like that fastest plane basically um and not to say that this would be the fastest vehicle on earth but i like to think it is uh, so there's that and i showed you down below but the fuel lobe's actually all the way up here this is that 32 percent fuel lobe so i mean that's a fuel lobe like i said i will show the share the can specs with you guys I want to see how it performs first before I get people out there begging me to know what the cam specs are because if it sucks, I don't want people making sucky cams. So let me put this back and look at it. Look at it. Gotta love a good cam shot. Let me uh, let me put this bad boy back and we'll get into this LT1. Alright, so I made a mess in the garage. I showed you the cam. I showed you all the other parts I got. Showed you the fuel injector. That was another thing I picked up. Um, so let's go ahead and tear into this LT1. That's the next phase of this video. I'm going to time lapse like I did the video before. I'll stop and talk. I'm actually about to go over there and show you what stopped me. And then we'll finish up the video. All right, so here it is, LT1. As you can see, I got one head off and another one's holding on for dear life. So the main thing uh, that stopped me 
is this fancy, just grand GM, just fantastic idea of a head bolt. Um, so that is a half inch Allen head head bolt. Um, learning new things about the LT all the way through this process, I can probably tell you 90% of things about an LS platform, uh, not just, well, the engine and what's going on with it, but the LTs I'm still learning. Um, so I swing over here. If you watch my last video, uh, or you can figure it out by this video, there was two things that I mentioned that I definitely need. One that I kind of needed that I just need to get out the way. The main thing I needed was this half inch Allen head. I've already got it on my extension. I've already tested it. It's going to work. We're about to pull that head off here in a minute. Uh, another thing that I mentioned that I did need just to invest in is some more Allen bits. I have a good amount of them here uh, over in my toolbox and in my bigger one, but I just didn't have enough. Obviously, didn't have this, so it told me I didn't have enough. The last thing that I've been needing, uh, this isn't my first engine I'm taking apart. It probably won't be my last, so I figured I'd go ahead and buy a balancer puller. Um, this isn't the best one. I actually prefer the actual GM, uh, I guess you could say snap on tools, or OEM tools is the one that makes it balancer puller, but this will work for more than just the few GM not few but some of the gm stuff that i'll use it on if i ever take apart other engines i want to be able to use more than one this works i'm not going to abuse the heck out of it so to get the job done all of this stuff is from amazon if you want to check it out um really you can get on amazon and look if you want to ask me where i got it from feel free uh but i just want to show you guys that like i said we're about to pull this head off right now and then we'll be back in the game so time lapse here we go All right, ladies and gentlemen, finally got that head off, had to work it off. Uh, wasn't too bad. The main thing that I was really, really concerned about was going to be the condition of this head. Uh, whether the piston hit it, uh, we didn't know if the piston was actually, well, Greg kind of figured it out, but we weren't 100% sure if the piston cracked and hit it. Um, if um, a piece that broke off caused anything or anything like that, this is the cylinder that it was hurt at which is cylinder number five luckily that head really looks really good it's just dirtier than the other ones even though the other ones are pretty dirty as well that's the one that had the catastrophic failure and it looks good so that's a good assessment um you look at the rest of the engine yes the water uh corrosion and stuff is in there I'm not really worried about that it'll actually get cleaned up probably by the time i get done with this video the big thing is this piston right here. As you can see, this piston does look a little bit different from the other ones. Um, like I said, I know the bottom of it, the skirt, or not the skirt, but the bottom of the piston is missing. Um, the top, if you took this motor apart and you didn't take the bottom end apart, you would not be able to tell what's going on because it's all on the bottom side. Now I can look at this and actually confirm that. Um, so there's that. The only damage is you can see it right there. It scuffed the cylinder wall. It nicked it. I can feel it. I can feel it in the cylinder wall. I really think Hunter will be able to fix that. It's not bad. Really have to hone this thing and clean it up really good. Those pistons do allow for that. We'll have to make sure the ring is good on this one particular piston. Other than that, it should be good to go. So that is a great, great news. Um, so I'm going to put you guys back on the time lapse. I'm going to pull the bouncer off and the front cover off. And then I'll probably talk. We're going to flip this thing over and get this bottom end out of there. Or at least the crank is going to stay in. Everything else is going to come out. But let's get to it. So hopefully you enjoyed all that finally got all got the cam out cam phaser off all that good stuff um first time taking that phaser gear bolt out so that was a little bit of an adventure uh but now we're down to the mains about to uh pop it off got all the pistons marked so that's always important 
even though these rods, I mean, you want to keep the caps together because we'll be able to reuse these rods, worst case scenario. We know we got one bad piston. It's not that we really want to reuse any of this, but we'll uh, we'll finish up taking up this bottom end. I'm going to have to, well, I can get the rear cover off. It's not too bad. Or actually, I'm going to leave it on because I'm not taking the crank out. And we'll go from there. So I got the infamous number five piston out of its home and it's, it failed pretty much. It fell straight out of the, the cylinder. Uh, that was pretty funny. When I started tapping on it, I was like, yeah, this is going to fall out. But uh, here's part of the, the ring. There's half of it there. It's a piece of piston here. Two more pieces right there that just, those pieces came off. This part of the piston right there. Uh, this ring is the top ring's fine, and then you got the bottom of the piston right there that broke off. I think that's probably what started all this. Uh, because if you look at, I think this is kind of dumb. I was just talking to my dad about it. If you look at this part of the piston, it's got these two little cuts. Well, when you look at this side of it, that's pretty much where it broke off. Um, so that's kind of like a weak spot. And missing parts of the piss, this lower ring. I mean, this piston's, it's not cracked. Like the top side, like I said earlier, you would never be able to tell what's going on underneath. But like I said, everything just started falling out of the cylinder, even the piston. Obviously, because of the pressure of the rings, when you're taking the pistons out, that's what keeps the, the piston inside the cylinder. So with these rings pretty much being broken and only this top one holding on, it slid right out really only had to tap it once so good job Greg you did a great job buddy <laughs> all right so there it is engine is now uh, almost completely bare We're keeping the crank in there uh, no reason for me to take it out right now uh, spun it over everything spins fine everything looks good so that's good to go. Uh, I showed you the piston. Got the uh, cam and everything out. So besides the crank and the mains being in, uh, like I said, everything else is out of that bad boy. Looking good. Uh, learned a lot, like I said before, still learning about this LT platform. If I had the cover off the LS, well, not LS, or whatever you want to call it, the six liter that's right there, they look pretty similar. Uh, but there's a lot of difference and, and changes that are between the two. So we're just about ready to go to American Speed Shop to get this bad boy built. Only thing we're waiting for is the bearings from Texas Speed. Uh, I had to really kind of do what I had to do to get bearings because even those are getting on back order. Everybody's building stuff right now, messing me up. So got to get bearings for this bad boy and we'll be good to go. Um, my hands aren't dirty. Shout out to Mr. Organic. He got his wraith and I copped one of his masks uh, for everything that's going on out here in the world. Uh, another thing I want to mention is the head. I said that already. The head on this one looks good. Uh, this did remind me that I probably need to get an oil pump as well just because I don't know when, what went through that one and what came out of it. So get an oil pump and that's about it. The Camaro in here, dirty, dirty, super dirty. Uh, a few more things I got to do in the meantime before I start tearing this thing apart because by the time I want to focus 110% on the engine and getting it tuned in, dialed in, everything 100%. So I want to get all the little knickknack things I need to touch up on it uh, 100%. CTSV looking beastly. My dad's this close to finally doing something to his car. We just got to break, break that edge and I think he's going to be sold. Uh, probably, especially by the time I get done with this, he ain't going to let that last too long. So CTSV is going to be making some noise soon. Um, but that is it. I'm worn out again, but I'm happy. The car 
it's making progress. We got the engine apart. We're we're getting there. Some progress that I wanted to see. So I appreciate you guys for watching. Hopefully this video wasn't too long. I won't really know until I edit it because a lot of bits and pieces into it. But I appreciate you guys for watching. Make sure you like, thumbs up, subscribe. Shout your boy out if you want to. Hit me up on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, do that. Because I posted most of this on Instagram already. But check it out. And everybody have a good day. Thank you.